ladies and gentlemen, our feature presentation. My name is Ida Ostrow. I'm 94 years old, and my memories of the Brooklyn Jewish Center are all wonderful. I'm happy to say they were just happy occasions. That's what I remember. I was born, it's secret, but I'll tell you, 1920. I remember a great deal. I went to public school, PS 91. Uh, the community was a very strong Jewish community, very proud of their identity. There were one and two generations of families there, so that it was quite stable. Um, I had my grandparents, my paternal grandparents lived there and were members of the Murphy Synagogue, which I understand is still very, very much functioning. And my parents belong to the Brooklyn Jewish Center and very proud of it and I have the most fun memories. And my time at the Brooklyn Jewish Center started somewhere in the early 30s because Rabbi Leventhal's sermons on Friday night attracted hundreds of people who came on Friday night to hear his sermons. And I must tell you, to this day, in all my experiences with uh, a few synagogues where we were born during the years, uh, Rabbi Leventhal was the most spiritual rabbi that I ever knew to this day. And the other thing about his um, sermons were well, not only they inspiring, but they were educational. Rabbi Leventhal, who was a very impressive man, who spoke most eloquently. His sermons were, even as a child, you would be awed by what he had to say. And everything was very, very meaningful. And even with all his prominence, Rabbi Leventhal, he was a very friendly man. You weren't afraid to meet him and he'd say hello to you and whether he remembered you or not, but as a child you felt very welcome. And I think that was the important part too of the synagogue as our parents spent a good deal of time there but we as children were always welcome. We were never chastised. I remember going to Hanukkah parties. It was a, a joy for me to come. I was a very young girl. My family lived in the area. And on Friday nights, my brother and my older sister and myself, I was the youngest, came to the Brooklyn Jewish Center to listen to Rabbi Leventhal. And we remained, I was married in 1940. And I had my first child in 43. And when she was, I'm not quite sure at what age I, I enrolled her into the Brooklyn Jewish Center. We joined the center at that particular time and we remained members of the Brooklyn Jewish Center until 1977, when I, we moved to Rockaway. Rabbi Kreitman married my daughter, my older daughter. Oh, I liked him very much. He was a very, very personable, honorable, and considerate human being, a very, very nice man. In those years, I met his wife and his mother-in-law used to come. 
But uh, he was a wonderful, I think, a wonderful man. Wonderful. As a matter of fact, I ran into him a couple of years ago. He was filling in at the temple that I was going to in Rockaway uh, for one of the holidays, and he was there. So I was happy to see him, by the way. I had two brothers and one sister. My oldest brother was bar mitzvahed at the Brooklyn Jewish Center, and I remember how absolutely beautiful it was. My brother was a brilliant boy <laughs> and did his portion beautifully. The actual ceremony was at the Jewish synagogue, but the party was in our home at 544 Crown Street. <laughs> the whole downstairs was converted into what was known in our family as the ballroom. <laughs> and it really was a beautiful room. Kingston Avenue was the Madison Avenue of Brooklyn. There were beautiful dress shops. There were furriers, oh, and milliners, very important milliners. I remember one which was funny. It was on Kingston Avenue and possibly off Carroll Street. It was a delicatessen. And it was, I think there was an alley that separated the street. I lived in Kingston and Eastern Parkway. And the, that was where we were walking to the center for Friday nights. This is long before I was, this is in the, in the 30s. Eastern Parkway felt like the Champs-Élysées of Brooklyn. They had benches, center part, and beautiful houses on either side. Eastern Parkway was a landmark, and you knew that you went to the left, and that was where your grandparents lived. You went to the right, and you'd be going to the synagogue. I had an aunt and an uncle that lived on President Street between Brooklyn and New York. And um, there was a good deal of comings and goings, and bar mitzvahs, especially with my oldest brother, that were held at the synagogue. I don't remember the names of all the all the many people that live there, it, it does have a lot of houses. But I do remember that Horowitz and Margaretten both lived on the street. One lived on one side and one lived on the other side. And, well, naturally it wasn't as prominent a company as it is now, or know the name, but within the community it wasn't important. Uh, our next door neighbor's name was Saucher, and they had many more children than we had. And at that time, it was a wonderful, wonderful neighborhood. My kids grew up in the Botanic Gardens across the way. In the museum, in the winter, they had a big hill. My husband used to take them sledding down the hill at the uh, museum. Too long a walk to the museum, but you went to the museum, or we went to the zoo. <laughs> it was our world. We moved into the Turner Towers, which is directly opposite the uh, museum and the main library of Brooklyn is on that street. And that was a Friday afternoon visit. And I remember how different the libraries were. You had to be very quiet. The librarian would ask to see your hands before you touched the book to make sure they were clean. And you had the book just for a week. I'm so proud of it. It was such a meaningful area. I think planted many, many moral happenings in my being, I, I think there was a civility, there was a sense of pride, 
and uh, an importance. You know, uh, snob appeal, people would say, well, where were you born? And you said Brooklyn. Everybody was born in Brooklyn. But on Eastern Parkway, and my parents went to the synagogue, well, I was a lot more important. The ladies would be all dressed in their most f fancy clothes. Um, I remember my father going to the services earlier, and my mother and my brothers and I would be going later. In. We walked every, all the years of all the holidays, we walked. We lived on the Lefferts Avenue, we bought a house later on Lefferts Avenue between Washington and Bedford. We walked from there, every, I never rode to the Brooklyn Jewish Center from all the years that I can tell you. I remember the sanctuary so very well. This is a silly story, <clears throat> but I would sit next to my dad and play with his talus. And the ladies were all well, well dressed. Another silly story was I remember the fox neck pieces that the women wore and playing with the mouth on, on, the, on the stole. And, but everyone had to be well-dressed because it was such an important place to go to. It was beautiful. I must tell you, I saw Schneerson every year for Yontif because I lived across the street from the Botanic Gardens. And he used to march down Eastern Parkway with a whole retinue of young men, and they used to elbow their ways. They wanted to get closer. And they went to the gardens at the Botanic Gardens, and there was a lake there. And they used to go in there and do their tapas in that park. And I used to see him come by every year for years if I used to see him come by. So I know exactly who you're talking about. And I know the influence that he has had. I believe that a good portion of the people were first generation Jews. And their desire was to assimilate but remain very, very connected to their Judaism. Their desire was financial success and their children were to become very well educated and they were. The uh, people that I grew up with that are as old as I am, <laughs> all became either doctors, lawyers, there were many judges. There were all sorts of wonderful, wonderful people and everyone wanted to be a friend. It was always you had to have an A plus, but learning was important. And a friend of mine, Dorothy Ross, was a teacher at the Brooklyn Jewish Center and she taught all my three children, went through her classes. Very, very warm feelings when I knew <clears throat> we were going to go to the synagogue. I remember swimming in the synagogue. Paul Bragg, who advocated the same kind of lifestyle uh, exercise, and he loved this center. He loved coming here on Sundays and doing his, his swimming and his diving at that time. And he was very much an athlete. My mother would dress all three of us, the three oldest, in navy blue sailor coats. And we bought, got that for um, Passover. And navy blue chinchilla coats for the winter. Uh, dresses, I don't remember exactly, but believe me, I look good. My paternal grandfather was more religious and was the person who went to Murphy Synagogue. 
he would have wonderful, wonderful satyrs. I can just see him dressed in white, leaning on a very, very soft, big chair with pillows. And it seemed like, I don't know how many people my grandmother must have had to her satyrs, but they were really outstanding satyrs. I don't know if these were very religious people. I don't, I'm not sure about that but very active um, Jewish, good, they were good members. They were good members, these people. Many of them were very active in the center. The Kushner family was very active in the center. Well, it made a big impression upon me. <clears throat> I think it was because our parents were very, very anxious to have a synagogue that was most beautiful, that had a lot of prestige. You know, uh, when I was young, it never occurred to me to even think about how long I wanted to live or how old I wanted to be. Never occurred to me at all. And one day I looked in the mirror <laughs> and I said, when did all this happen? I have not seen it, the interior since I was 12 years old. I have seen the exterior. I'm so excited with anticipation of bringing my daughters, my grandchildren, and my six great-grandchildren. My growing up in the community and having experienced my experience at the Jewish Center, I felt it was necessary to be a practicing Jewess and to have my children appreciate the fact that being a Jew was a privilege and absolutely necessary. My, as I said, I have all these wonderful great-grandchildren who are bar mitzvahed. I'm looking forward to my third bar mitzvah. And then I have two other little guys, but they're only four and six, so I have to wait. But being a Jew is very important. I'm just thrilled to be here today with my family. I wanted them to see. I'm thrilled that they're getting to see where their parents came from. You know, it happens to be you're the oldest one in the room. It happens to be you're the oldest one in the room. Uh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I haven't gotten any younger since I'm here. <laughs> so why do you think it's important? Why do you think it's important for children and grandchildren to know where they come from? Oh, I think it's so important. Everybody has to have a feeling of belonging, of roots, of who they come from. And sometimes maybe that helps them go to know where they're going, like my son. So I'm thrilled. I must say, I'm thrilled to see what you've done with this wonderful building. And. Uh, that I'm here with my whole family today. I'm just thrilled. That's all I, and they're a wonderful family, I must tell you that. I'm very fortunate, a very fortunate old lady. I'm blessed that every day of the week. I thank God every day of the week. I think that I would like them to continue to have a strong family closeness that they'll realize how important it is and of course to remember and pass down the memories that I'm sharing right now and um, that they in turn will tell some of these stories to their children and uh, I'm proud that they're members of Chabad as rabbi is a, and his wife are really wonderful, wonderful people and encourage them to be participants.
I am so impressed. I wish I lived in Brooklyn again. <laughs> <laughs> I would be right here because I think this is an outstanding, it always was, an outstanding temple. And I see that today it's even going to be more outstanding with what you're doing here today. I think it's just, just fabulous. I just think it's just wonderful, wonderful. And I just pray that everybody stay well and continue to do all the wonderful things that you're doing because you're inspiring a whole new generation of young children. And that's so important in our world today. Besides um, face maker or whatever you call that stuff, <laughs> or peacemaker or whatever, that the children grow up knowing who they are and that they're Jews and they can make some contribution in this world. That's what we hope for. Beautiful. And that's what I see here. Beautiful, beautiful. With all, the, with all the preparation and all the work that's been going into it, but also this work that went into love, with love, and that shows in the building. And the building is fantastic. Never in a million years would I have dreamt that this building, which went up 90 years ago, that's in the condition it looks the way, and it's inspiring kids today uh, in the great numbers, which I think is just fantastic. And coming out now at this stage and having all of my mind clear, I'm the most grateful woman in the whole world. That's all I can say. And I always tell my children, there's only one thing I want you to remember after I die, that your mother was a happy old lady. That's what I want them to remember. I hope you'll be continuing to tell them for many more years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that we don't know. But whatever I can leave behind, that's all you can leave, is what people remember and what they feel about, about you and so on. So I'm just very grateful and I'm thrilled to be here today. And to me, what, Rabbi, Blumas. what's your name? Rabbi Blumas. Oh, Rabbi, you've signed the letters. I'm very happy to meet and spend a few little time with Rabbi Blumen. But, but in conclusion, Memories of the Brooklyn Jewish Center are vivid, are beautiful, are happy.